coming up on Fresh View with Pastor Inkechi Ene. Amos 3.3 3 tells us, can two walk together except they be agreed? You cannot walk together. The word and the signs can't go together except they agree. So there is no sign or wonder that will come to you that will be out of agreement with the word of God. You will see from the word of God that this is the will of God. This is the desire of God. God does not make you pay for these things. God does not make you suffer, you know, before you can get these things. He doesn't make you tarry. He just needs you to believe the word. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Hello and welcome to Fresh Dew. I am Pastor Nkechi Ene and it's always my pleasure to welcome you to every single episode of Fresh Dew. Today we continue our message series, Discernment for the Last Days. And this is part seven of that message series. We said that this series will be in three major sections. The first section is recognizing a balanced gospel. And that's what we've been doing so far. The next section will be recognizing a false minister. And the last section will be recognizing a good shepherd. So you can see that we're in for a good time with this series, recognizing this series rather, discernment for the last days. So let's continue with recognizing a balanced gospel. We, looked, we had some definitions and then we looked at what we call the union and the, of the word and the spirit is the foundation for any discernment you want to have in these last days. Then we began to look at four characteristics of a balanced gospel. Four characteristics. And we got that from 1 Thessalonians 1.5. For our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and in much assurance, as you know what kind of men we were among you for your sake. So looking at these four characteristics of a balanced gospel, we said A, a balanced gospel comes in word. B, a balanced gospel comes in power. Another B, we've been looking at some points. A balanced gospel comes in power. We said one, that God confirms his spoken word by his power. God is not out to confirm your ministry. God is out to confirm the word of God. And when you preach or teach the word of God, the power of God will be Will be, will be seen as God confirms that word that you teach. Then we said God is working with you and helping you. God is working with you and helping me. Then we said God is bearing witness with you. So the last point under it comes in power. Remember, we're looking at four characteristics of a balanced gospel. The last point under that, under it comes in power, is that God expects the signs to follow and not lead. We're talking about signs and wonders being what you see when this power of God is displayed, confirming the word. When God works with you and bears witness with you, well, these signs and wonders, are you supposed to follow them or are they supposed to follow you? Are they supposed to lead you or are you supposed to lead them? Let's, let's, let's look at this, signs and wonders. So the point is, God expects the signs to follow and not lead. The word signs is the word Simeon. Simeon is a sign, a miracle, token, wonder, which is God's seal, proof, attestation of his presence, and evidence of his nature. God's nature is good. God's nature is supernatural. God's nature is, you know, awesome. And these signs will be good things, supernatural things, things that are not according to human nature or normal nature. They are rather evidence of the nature of God. Simeon, it's, 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 that's the word for it, the Greek word for it, a sign, a miracle. Then wonders is the Greek word teras. Teras, and that's a prodigy or a wonder, something that expresses, you know, a spectator who sees a wonder goes, Oh my goodness, that's a wonder. So these signs and these wonders and these ooh ah things, awesome miracles, awesome manifestations of God's fa favor and God's power, are they supposed to follow us or are we supposed to follow them? 
Mark 16, 15. Let's begin to see some things here. And he said it to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. This is the commission to you and I as children of God. Go into all the world, not just the big cities, not just the major cities in the country, all the world. Every creature, everybody is included. So go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow. Uh oh These signs will follow. Who will they follow? Those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Verse 20, this time from the King James Version. So I read 15 to 18 from the New King James. Now let's look at verse 20 from the King James. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. So as we saw in verse 17, these signs will follow. Then we see in verse 20, these signs are following them. So we establish the signs follow, they don't lead. But you know, sometimes when you read the Bible in English, you miss some interesting truths that may be tucked into the scriptures. And the way you can sometimes expose this is by going back to the original language in which the Bible was written. And in the, in, in the New Testament, we go back to the Greek, and you don't even have to be a Greek scholar, I'm not one, but go back with the basic concordance and dictionaries that are available to you, and begin to see what are these words. And it was interesting for me to discover that the word follow in verse 17 is not the same word, it's related, but it's not the same word follow in verse 20. And there must be a reason why the scriptures, why the Holy Spirit, you know, inspired two different words. He says, these signs will follow them that believe. Then he says, the signs are following the word of God. So what exactly is he trying to say there? Let's look at the word follow from verse 17. And some very interesting things will come out here. Follow in verse 17 is translated from the Greek word. Now let's, let's try and pronounce this. Parakolutheo. Forgive me if I didn't pronounce it well, if you're a Greek professor. Para is what I want you to note there. So the two words there, para and akolutheo. Para is a word that means beside. Just being beside you, walking along with you, side by side with you. Akolutheo is an idea, it gives an idea of a road, you know, someone, somewhere you're walking on, somewhere you're, you know, someone you're with along a road. But this one has the word para before it. And I said para means beside. It means beside, to follow close up side by side. Again, the emphasis on side by side. To accompany, somebody's walking with you, to conform to. But it is used to refer to them that believe. In fact, from the Kenneth Woods translation, it says, and those having gone forth, that's in verse 20, I'm, I'm dealing with verse 17, let's leave that for now. So it says, it, it's used to refer to them that believe. So para kalutheo, those that follow side by side, these signs will go side by side with them by, that believe. What's that telling you? It's telling me something very simple. When you are a believer, when you become born again, you step into a realm of possibilities. The Bible says in Mark 9, 23, Jesus said to them, if you can believe, all things are possible to them who believe. If you can believe, the day you believe, the day you got born again, you had signs, paracolotheo, side by side with you. You stepped into a cloud of possibilities. You stepped into a cloud of the supernatural where anything was possible with you if you could just believe that that thing was possible. So these signs will follow. These signs, this Simeon, this terrace, these wonders, these awesome miracles are with you, child of God, walking with you side by side, begging to be released, begging to be let go, begging to go into the lives of people as you've gone into the world to preach the gospel. But it says these signs are following you, accompanying you side by side. They are closely following you, waiting on you to do your bidding. The question I want to ask you, child of God, is will you let them loose? Will you be conscious that these signs are following you beside you all the time? Right here beside me is a potential for someone to get healed. Right here beside me is a potential for someone to be delivered from depression. Right here beside me is a potential for one to be raised from the dead. If I can believe all things are possible, I'm walking around with a cloud of possibilities around me. That's what the scripture is telling us. Ah, but then how do you let them go? Even if you want to release those signs, how do you release them? What do you do? Well, go into all the world and preach the word. You've got to let the word out and let's see what happens 
immediately you let the word out what those signs begin to do. Those signs that have been walking along beside you, what happens when you let the word out? Look at verse 20. Verse 20 tells us, they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord walking with them and confirming the signs, confirming the word, remember, with signs following. Ah, that word following is another word. And that's a word, that's a word translated epa koluseo. Mm. First one was para koluseo. This is epa koluseo. So we see following is following along the way. But how are these signs following? Who are they following? When they follow them that believe, they follow them side by side, waiting to be released. The way you release those signs is by taking the word out of your mouth and preaching and teaching the word of God. What happens when you begin to when you begin to preach the word of God, the signs no longer parakaluseyo beside you, they begin to epakaluseyo. And what does epa mean? Where para means beside, epa means upon, to follow after, to follow close upon. That's like, you know, you know something we say in Pidgin English in Nigeria. I mean, I guess some other places maybe. If you're moving and somebody is going really close to you, you know, it can be said this way. They were following me bumper to bumper. That means they were right behind me, following me. That's what that word basically is saying. Epakoluseyo. There's something in front, and these signs are following close upon, closely after that thing. They are no longer in the realm of possibilities. Beside you, the believer, waiting for you to let them lose. The minute you begin to teach the word, the signs confirm the word. They don't confirm you and your ministry. You can walk around with the, all possibilities around you, and nothing happens. You may go to the grave with all those possibilities, but the minute you begin to teach the word, the minute you begin to preach the word, the minute you let the word loose out of your mouth, these signs are triggered. And what happens? They are no longer beside you. They are following upon, not you, but they are following upon the word. The signs are following the word of God. Glory be to God. So epakolutheo, I said epi, means upon, and then akolutheo. So together, that means to be in the same way. Get that? To be in the same way with that is to accompany specifically as a disciple. Note that, as a disciple. So when a sign occurs, what happens? It is released by going forth anywhere and everywhere preaching the word. When you go forth anywhere and everywhere preaching the word of God, these signs begin to follow closely upon the hills, but they will never overtake because it is following after a disciple, like a disciple. The signs will never go ahead of the word. That means the word is in front. The word is what matters. The word is what has to go forth first. Jesus went about teaching and preaching and then healing. The signs began after the word. Like we said the last time, the word has to go forth. The word is the foundation. The word is the anchor for every sign and wonder. If you're performing signs and wonders as a minister and you despise or scorn the teaching or preaching of the word of God, you've got to be sure what power you're using to bring out those signs and wonders. Because the signs are like a disciple. They follow closely upon the teaching of the word of God. It says also here, to be in the same way. That means the sign has to be in agreement with the word. Amos 3.3 3 tells us, can two walk together, except they be agreed. You cannot walk together. The word and the signs can't go together, except they're agreed. So there is no sign or wonder that will come to you that will be out of agreement with the word of God. You will see from the word of God that this is the will of God. This is the desire of God. God does not make you pay for these things. God does not make you suffer, you know, before you can get these things. He doesn't make you tarry. He just needs you to believe the word. So when you believe the word and the word has been sent forth, the signs begin to follow closely after. That's why as a believer, you should speak the word. You should declare the word. You get home, in, you get home at night, declare the word. Wake up in the morning, speak the word. Circumstances are in front of you, speak the word. Circumstances are not even in front of you. Speak the word. The signs are not interested. Ah, this is great. The signs are not interested in whether the word is coming from the mouth of your pastor or from your own mouth. Ooh. Or even the mouth of your four-year-old child. The signs just need the word. They just need to hear the word. And the minute the word of God undiluted, sincere, integ in integrity, the word of God is spoken, the signs almost like activate. And they begin to follow the word, to confirm the word that has been sent forth. So speak the word. Don't wait till you get to church on Sunday. Let my pastor have a word of knowledge. Let my pastor speak the word. You speak the word. When you speak the word, almost like, you know, magnetic attraction in the atmosphere, the signs begin to follow the word. And when you believe the word, you declare the word, and you consistently speak the word, you will have what you say as these signs and wonders ooh, come into manifestation. Look at what 1 Peter 2.21 says. 
For to, you, for to this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his footsteps, his steps, epa kalutheo, that you should epa kalutheo, his footsteps. You can never follow Christ and go beyond him. You can't say, Christ, I'm following you. Some of us try to do that. But you're moving too slowly. I'll meet you up front. Ah, you're no longer a disciple. You've got to be following Christ. If he moves fast, you move fast. If he steps slow down, you slow down. You are always following him. That's what a disciple does. And that's what the signs and wonders do with the word of God. They are always behind, following the word of God, step by step by step. You can never have a situation where a disciple overtakes a, 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 the, the master. So when people say, oh, the word of God, well, let's just get into some action. What is action? If that action or those miracles or those performances do not follow the word of God, they do not act as a disciple to the word of God. They're not a product of the word of God. You certainly, I can tell you, child of God, you don't want those signs and wonders. Glory be to God. That was good. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord, for showing us. This is, this is awesome. Thank you, Lord, for showing us. Glory be to God. So you don't want a situation, child of God, where you're running after signs. The signs are to follow you. They're not to lead you. Oh, but what a sad day it is when you see people who are being led by signs and wonders. You say, well, pastor, did it start today? Oh, no. I'll show you from the scriptures. It's been there. Just that these are for the last days. And remember then, the last days actually started on the day of Pentecost or when the church was born. That's when the last days started because they began to speak like the last days were tomorrow. And we've been in these last days now for over 2,000 years. And now we're in the last hours of the last days. And now you have even more situations where you have false prophets, false ministers, which we're going to get into that. And these signs are leading believers. Believers want to hear where action happens. Believers want to hear where people fall down and stand up and things fall off and grow up. Again, I repeat, like I said last time, in part six, I believe, or part five, I can't remember. There are many supernatural miracles I have seen follow the word. We just teach the word. People get healed of things. Somebody just sent a testimony to me now about being healed of 24 years of having a stomach upset. Each time he ate a particular food, he threw up. He would purge, as they would say. He would go to the bathroom and, you know, have diarrhea, all, all, all those kind of stuff. And he would, he would just not be able to keep it down. So he told himself he had a sensitive stomach. And there was a word of, word of knowledge that came after the word was preached. And God in that atmosphere said, somebody with a sensitive stomach, lay hands on yourself and go eat what you're going to eat. He's been eating that thing now nonstop, no diarrhea, no throwing up. God just healed him like that. That's a sign. But I didn't just come into church that day and say, whoa, 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 everybody begin to fall, everybody begin to do this. No, the word went forth first. And these signs, even an evangelist who has won a, a, a crusade, you say um, an evangelist is not really a teacher of the word. No, but he would speak for the word. And he may take 10, 15, 20 minutes. He may not take one hour to send forth the word. But if he's a true evangelist of God, he will speak forth the word. And that word that has gone forth becomes the master for the signs to begin to follow. So we're not supposed to chase after signs and have signs lead us. We're supposed to have these signs follow us, accompany us side by side, and then run after the word once we let the word out of our mouths. Glory be to God. So look at... Mark 13, just to show you this has been happening. Mark 13, doesn't this sound like today? Then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ. <laughs> just imagine that. Hey, look, here is the Christ. Oh, look, he's there. You see, here and there are two different places. How can the Christ be in two places? Oh, look, here is the Christ. At that point in time, you're showing somebody. Ah, that's the place we need to go. Oh, no, 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 it's there. No, this man has more power than this one. Ah, no, this one, they fall faster. Mm, this one, you actually see them. This one, you see them rolling on the floor. Some demons will come out. They, why, why are they saying that they want to go and see some? Spectacles. Well, you hardly see believers say, ah, there's a word conference going on. That great teacher of the word is in town holding a meeting. Most believers who just say, uh, a meeting, would there be any, does he pray for people? Does he pray for the sick? Any action will be there? And if the answer is, well, you know, when you come out of there, your life is changed. You believe more. You're now ready to take on issues. And you, your mind actually gets renewed up a whole, you know, bunch of steps just by listening to the word you won't see the crowd it's not likely because it's not look here is the Christ look he's there but look at what he says if anyone says to you look here is the Christ or look he's there do not believe don't believe it for false Christ and false prophets will rise 
and show signs and wonders. So there will be signs and wonders to deceive, if possible. It, means it ought not to be so, if possible. Even the elect, you and I, the chosen ones, the chosen generation, the royal priesthood, say if possible, the aim of these false prophets, which we're going to look at soon, is to deceive you. Deceive other people. But can you imagine they can also deceive the elect? That's what he's saying. But take heed. See, I have told you all these things beforehand. This was 2,000 years ago. And the same admonition still happens now, child of God. The same admonition. The same admonition. We're called to have these signs. Follow the word that we teach. Have these signs follow us. And not have us follow the signs. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, because each time your word goes forth, the supernatural realm is where we're in. I pray that those watching will be sensitive to know that their answers are here. Their miracles are here. They don't have to feel anything. They just need to take it by faith. And say, so, Lord, I receive my change. I receive my healing. I receive my wholeness. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you for it's your desire to touch your people. And that's why you have given us the word. And the word we will preach, the word we will teach, and your assurance is that you're working with us accompanying us, and these signs will follow the word that we teach. We give you praise, Lord. We give you praise. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. You have so many questions about your life and life in general. Why? When? How? What? Who? And the list goes on. Sister, Jesus is the answer to every question and he loves you just the way you are. He loves you too much to leave you this way. He is knocking on the door of your heart. Will you make a decision for a change today? To surrender your life to Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. If you want to do that, say this prayer out loud, meaning it from the depth of your heart, according to Romans 10, 8 to 13, and you will be saved. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you are the Son of God, and that you died for me and rose again just to save me. Come into my heart, and make me brand new as you have promised. I will live for you all the days of my life. In your name I pray, amen. Amen and amen. Congratulations on taking the most important decision of your life. You are now born again and a brand new person. It has all happened on the inside of you. We can help you grow in your new faith so that what has just happened on the inside will surely be reflected in your everyday life. Please call us at 0700 Fresh Dew or email us at saved at freshdew.tv and we will be there for you. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 3737 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Freshdew TV and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Freshdew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website www.freshdew.tv Once again, thanks for being with us today and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life. 
Romans 10, 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life.